getting <clears throat> it's getting better. It's getting really, really better. Um, oh, honestly, if you just you know Google, I wish to learn wish to learn quantum computing. How should I get started? Mm, don't start with the quantum mechanics. Uh, it's just starting with linear algebra. It's getting better, really. Uh, the only thing you need for basic understanding of QC is basic understanding of tensors. So just multidimensional vectors and matrices and, and the tensor products, so how do you multiply those things? And I'd argue, <clears throat> I'd argue, so I this is something that I genuinely hate, the quantum Fourier transform. For some reason, people tend to explain that in the worst possible way. I mean, even the Kiski textbook has gotten way better. It's definitely gotten way better, but it still does a lot of that stuff in here. So bu, 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 you go here, go boom, 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 which is good. I mean, as I said in many of uh, my videos, um, it's not, I mean, that's definitely needed for the proof of correctness and whatnot, but it's, it just confuses people that want to start getting learning, getting, getting, getting quickly up and running with learning that. So um, basically here we're learning, right? So this is something that I basically uh, put together um, a couple of days ago, just a quick web page, uncertain systems. I'm going to be using that to uh, kind of talk a little bit about quantum computing and the journey, the exploratory journey that I'm doing and quantum intuition, which by the way, you should subscribe to if you like the content. Uh, quantum intuition, intuition, quantum intuition, YouTube. So this is this channel in here, not that weird video. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's, this, that's, that's it, that's it, that's the channel. So um, this basically, I'm, I'm, I'm basically learning, right, and exploring all that stuff. So uh, I basically, you know, I kind of put in here um, some of my thoughts on how you can can get quickly started with quantum programming. Um, I use the word programming because I know that if I use the word computing, some people will be like, oh yeah, you need the math and whatnot because it's about complexity analysis and all that stuff and whatnot. And I can't argue that. So, but I, it's really not something difficult. It's just different than what you're used to, but it's not impossible, right? And then what I'd recommend is don't hang, don't get too hanged up on the math and the gates. Just go ahead, try to analyze some of these circuits, or some of the basic textbook algorithms and then try to understand things as you go through uh, through them and as you need them and do definitely focus on interference and entanglement um, and try to understand those things a little bit more a little bit a little bit you know um, deep enough that you can that you feel comfortable with them and and this is something that's been sort of um, I think a uh, pretty key for me, which is try to understand the textbook algorithms until you're confident enough that you can explain to someone not familiar with QC and without using any equations. Um, and just Google, just really Google. Maths are not needed, qubits and the block sphere. You should understand the basics of, of qubits and how you represent a state, a quantum state with the so-called state vector and, and the probabilities, how you find them. That sure, the block sphere helps you understand a bit more um, single gates and, and single qubit operations, but as soon as you add another qubit, it just becomes uh, a niche tool, I'd say. Um, what's the best programming language? Um, I would say don't don't start with Qiskit or Circ or any of those things. I mean, those are all languages which uh, they serve two purposes. The one is to basically help you programmatically build circuits, which we you don't need when you're learning because um, you don't need to jump into doing some sort of quantum machine learning right away. And 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 they do have then some built-in algorithms that are like, you know, uh, fancier things that you don't then have to, you, you don't have to code. You can just use the built-in stuff in there. So I definitely say go with visual circuit editors first. Um, and I just love Quirk. Uh, no sign up, runs on the browser, simulates up to 16 qubits, but I, um, I've i dicked a little bit into the code and I realized you can actually tune that and increase the number. And I guess if you've got a good GPU, maybe you're lucky and you can go up to 20 qubits. I'm not so sure. <clears throat> and it works awesome in your phone, your, on your phone. And it's got, it's got a lot of features that um, 
it's got a lot of features that uh, other circuits don't have and you've got a lot of example circuits in here as well so um so you've got all, all the displays uh, to take a look at your states in between the uh, you know your gates and whatnot. So that's just something that I definitely recommend. Um, and then finally, online courses and books. Online courses, um, I haven't really done. I have I've done this one and I loved it because it actually did put some emphasis in uh, teaching you the basics of interference and and waves and all that stuff which i think it's uh, something that not everyone does nowadays i mean even the kiss kit it's something that i really the kiss kit textbook doesn't explain anything about interference and that's just something that i don't know um i think they should put some example in there um so this is definitely a good course to go through and books, that's definitely the one you should go. This book literally explains and gives an introduction, practical introduction to programming quantum computers. There's absolutely no physics in there. There's absolutely no fancy math in there, just the very basics you need. Um, that really taught me uh, that it's basically doable, right? The, the book with the octopus. And that's it really. Um, so, as I said, subscribe if you wanna learn with me. Uh, it's definitely a fun journey got tons of videos <clears throat> basically uploading more than once a week if I can and you know it's not tutorial stuff so don't expect to be taught uh, anything and I make mistakes all the time even if you take a look at my um, at my um, Grover so here I've got some of the projects I'll be I'll be improving that as well so um, if you go to Grover's algorithm I've got literally so I think the longest YouTube playlist about Grover's algorithm it's about 30 33 videos and i've probably done two or three of them that says hey now i got it that's the intuition about grover's algorithm um and every time i, I kind of realize later on that it's not really um as sharp as i like it to be and i revisit that so um yeah basically that's what i wanted to share sort of a bit of a, a bit of an update on these um it's getting better i think in general people are getting to understand starting to understand you don't need all that stuff you definitely need to if you want to Code a simulator if you want to, you know, do some stuff. I don't know, simulate some quantum system, whatever. You probably need the quantum mechanics and then and and the, and the heavy math, but not to get started. Definitely not to get started. Um, I think, I think that's it. Basically, that's all I wanted to share. Oh, and this is a, um, it's a. <clears throat> modified version of quirk that i'm working on it's basically a additive feature about inspecting in the, that helps you inspect the interference of that's happening within a, a circuit i'm not going to show this now here i'll make another video on this definitely because it's uh, i think it's worth playing with uh, to get an intuition definitely but uh yeah and you know got a got a new email address you can get in touch if you want uh you can support me on patreon and uh and then definitely help me it helps a lot if you subscribe to the to the quantum intuition channel basically cool perfect